Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Just a quick update. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Fedora 24 and the experiences I've had since uh, moving my primary system to 24. Um, overall, everything's been just fine. I've had really good success uh, on Fedora 24 these last few days. And honestly, there were minor issues. I wouldn't even call them bugs, but I did want to go through what I've experienced so far and give you my opinion on whether or not you should be considering an upgrade to uh, Fedora 24 if you're on a previous version of Fedora. So I'm going to start with uh, improvements first and then I'll go through the problems that I had. So the improvements that I've seen, um, one is everything seems to be much faster and more responsive especially in GNOME um, they have updated GNOME to 3.20 and I have to say that it is definitely um, faster I'm not gonna say it's um, a marked difference between the previous version and the newer version 3.20 but it is definitely smoother um, you may notice that I've changed my theme to paper so I was on um, my favorite one, Evo Pop, and I'll show you what happens when I switch to that in a little bit. Um, in Caden Live, they made some really awesome improvements, and I realize this isn't a Fedora update per se, but I do want to take a second and explain to you why I'm mentioning Caden Live. So, Fedora 23 was current as of a few days ago there was an updated version of Caden Live that came out but what happens is um, the Fedora project stops including updates even well before uh, Fedora 23 is no longer prime time so they may include a security update for an application but if there's an updated version that becomes available they don't necessarily um, upgrade to that version so if you wanted to do it yourself you would have to go to um, GitHub or wherever uh, the Caden Live source code is and pull it down and update it yourself if there are no uh, compiled versions like an RPM or whatever. And if you do that, of course, you have to uninstall the previous version using DNF, do a remove to install the newer version. So it's not a part of the Fedora 23 repository, despite the fact that there were updates. Um, on Caden Live, and that is the case for many applications. You'll see that <clears throat> with Office, um, Firefox, and so on. So, you know, you're on Fedora 24, you do a Firefox update uh, using DNF for both of them, and it's possible that the newer version, Fedora 24, will not have, um, well, no, it will have the latest Fedora. Firefox update and Fedora 23 will not have the latest update. So if you heard the car revving in the background, I do apologize. I got a gearhead across the street. He does have a pretty nice car, I must say, though. Anyway, um, one of the other improvements um, was using KDE Plasma. So right now I'm on GNOME, but I have been using KDE Plasma more. Um, the scaling, I have a video where I discuss how to scale your desktop and I'll be releasing that shortly. Uh, the scaling works very well. It did pretty good in Fedora 23 as well, but it seems to work even better in Fedora 24. A couple of bugs in Fedora 23 that got smoothed out towards the end of Fedora 23 as far as the scaling goes. Um, and those are also not present in Fedora 24, so they do very well in that regard. Um, so overall, those are the good things. Um, there are very few and far between. I'll add one other thing. Everything works fine with the exception of Caden Live in GNOME. It tends to crash frequently. And I'll explain what I'm going to do about that in a minute. Now, I've been using KDE more, the desktop interface, so uh, Caden Live runs fine in KDE, so that's a, an instant fix. Okay, so here's some of the problems I've had. Um, depending on the web page, and on this one you can see I have a left to right scroll bar, 
and I have an up and down scroll bar. Um, depending on the web page, and it seems to be web pages that use Java, um, if they have a window that is Java inside um, the primary window, the scroll bars are missing. Now I'm saying Java, but it may not actually be Java. I haven't actually checked to see what's being used. And what I'm seeing this uh, affect me in primarily, believe it or not, is gradebook programs for the various uh, colleges that I teach for. So if I go into one of my gradebooks, which I can't do because of uh, FERPA violations, of course, um, I have no scroll bar to scroll left to right. And I can't even, what I'm doing right now is I'm using the mouse pad and I'm doing the two finger side to side scroll. I can't even do that. So what I can do is use the arrow keys. Um, and you see it scrolls pretty fast when it's a normal web page. But when it's not, uh, like it's in Java, you basically are going one pixel a second. It's terrible. Um, so basically I consider it unusable. Now... Um, I have not tried another browser and I haven't done an update yet so I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, Caden Live is crashing frequently in GNOME, GNOME so whenever you save anything in Caden Live uh, it basically crashes. It does save it and then it comes back up. Uh, my evil pop theme is completely broken so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean. So if I go into uh, the tweak tool, and you can see now that I have a proper header up here with my theme. I'm using paper. Paper seems to completely support um, version 3.2 of GNOME. But if I change this theme to my favorite, which was Evil Pop Light, um, I don't know if you can tell. You can't really see where um, boxes, widgets, um, on-off switches, begin or end, you know. So I click here. Uh, before I wasn't even seeing um, the three dots here to minimize and maximize. And this line here didn't even exist. So it was just basically gray on gray. Um, so it's it's pretty near unusable so what I did was test out the other themes um, I don't remember if Numix worked too well I'll just click over to it I don't uh, yeah Numix does fine um, I'm not a big fan of Numix but it looks pretty decent uh, the other one I'm not sure how to pronounce this add Weta, uh, which is the default theme works perfectly fine and I decided to go with paper because I don't even think I think arc was even worse yeah I guess arc would work but I don't know what happened there we go no not really you can see the problem already with arc so visibility wise it just inside the screen and it could have to do with colors or whatever but um, basically what I'm seeing is that many of the themes that work with 3.18 uh, GNOME are not compatible so uh, just keep that in mind um, so anyway evil pop theme I'm sure it's gonna be updated at some point not even worried about that um, still getting I'm just stunned that this hasn't been fixed um, but hey whatever so I have this application and I can't figure out uh, what environment is using GTK Plus or whatever. Um, basically the font control, I cannot do anything with it uh, whether I'm in GNOME or I'm in any other desktop. So even if I go to another desktop and do scaling, everything else scales correctly but not these fonts. Um, let's see if I go to calendar because I was having this problem in yeah evolution calendar no this one's okay um, these numbers here in calendar were near to impossible to read 
but at least in GNOME I can read those numbers. They were so tiny in KDE Plasma you basically could not read them. Um, last problem and this would probably be categorized as a bug no matter what you set your screen brightness for it automatically goes to full brightness every single time you log in even if you're simply logging off and logging back on or logging off and switching to another desktop environment screen brightness 100 percent so again not too awful worried about that and given that we're on <clears throat> let's see what day four uh, if I do a DNF update, I do have 29 packages waiting. And looks like Fetty's getting some updates. Um, folks with hats getting an update, which is where uh, some of my tools are coming from. Uh, let's see some library updates uh, more Fetty updates uh, audit libs not sure what those are for so many updates some updates from folks with hats and my fedora handbrake update which I haven't been able to pull in um, for whatever reason I'm getting an error so we'll see what happens see if I can get that one in but I'll keep you posted. I'll do some updates and um, we'll see how it goes. But my whole take on this is if you're actually using Fedora and you are in production, meaning you're counting on Fedora to do a job for you to make money, um, you really don't want to be upgrading to Fedora 24. It's, it's my personal advice. Um, I always like to wait for uh, upgrades. You, you may ask, yeah, but you updated to your uh, full-time machine. Well, yes, that's true. But I have um, another laptop right to the right of me running Fedora 23 that dual boots into Windows. I have my main desktop machine across the room here that boots into Fedora 23 or Windows. I have two MacBook Pros that I can use. Um, so I have plenty of systems that are all production quality meaning I can pull any one of them out and get to work on them immediately. Um, on my Mac and Windows systems, I have um, my Google Drive set up so that all my files are synchronized. Uh, so if something happens to this system and it just doesn't work anymore, it's nothing to me. I don't even have to worry about it. There's maybe a few de uh, documents, um, but you know, if it's an important document, I've been uploading it to Google Drive anyway. So all I'm saying is if you have a production machine you're reliant on, my advice is to hold off. Um, you know, when the user base uh, expands from the beta group and more people use Fedora 24, they get more feedback at the Fedora project and they're able to um, commit more updates more quickly. So in just a, a matter of a few days, I've got 30 packages ready to go and usually what I see is those little issues that I have you know or minor bugs they kind of vanish and they're just a moot point so thank you for watching hope this helps you uh, if you have any comments leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them as I get time thank you very much and see you next time